I'm Annie Lamont, and I'm being joined by Rick Dean, the CEO of Onco Health. Great to see you today, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> You've had a storied career in healthcare. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So, been in healthcare most of my adult life. Um, been in companies that uh, have, you know, started small and grown big, and um, have have really just been focused on um, kind of trying to figure out ways that that we can do more for patients uh, at a at a time in their life that would be uh, very beneficial and very helpful. And you know, Onco Health uh, certainly has that as their mission. And so, um, happy to be here. Happy to be running this company. And um, it just continues what I've been trying to do my whole career. So Onco Health is a 10-year-old company that's dedicated to oncology. You joined just over four years ago. You've completely transformed the company. So the company's launching a new digital solution for cancer patients called Iris. So what is Iris? So Iris is a oncology-focused telehealth solution. And so what does that mean? Um, it, it essentially means that uh, from the comfort of your home, um, you will be able to have access to 24 by 7 oncology nurses. Uh, you'll have access to mental health professionals who are 100% focused in oncology and who have dedicated their lives to oncology. Um, and we're also building in content and uh, a concept of what we call a peer mentor, which are people that have you know, had cancer in their past or have been around someone who's had cancer in their past. And we're doing all that through a beautiful consumer experience, a beautiful mobile application um, that's based on human-centered design. So where did the idea for Iris come from? Yeah, so, you know, Iris is something that um, I think I've been thinking about for a number of years. Um, my grandmother was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was in my early 30s. Uh, that was in North Carolina. And, you know, there's Duke University and there's University of North Carolina and there's all kinds of great access to care. But you know, various times of, of her treatment, uh, there were just times when she was alone. Uh, I, I live in Atlanta, I was not there. And there are supportive things that, that needed to be thought about. Uh, I had a friend uh, who was diagnosed with cancer a few years ago as well. And um, you know, I asked him, can you tell me the drugs that you're gonna be on for your chemotherapy? Uh, he sent me a note and said, this is what it is. And uh, I sent a note to our head of oncology pharmacy and said, you know, I got a friend going through this. What what can you expect from that drug? And what's the symptoms look like? And what's the side effects look like from that? She sent me back a really interesting kind of note that I could understand as a non-clinician. And I forwarded it to my friend and said, hey, just take a look at this. Um, and he sent me back a note the next day and said, that was really interesting. You mind if I ask her a few more questions? And the reason that's important is because you know, this individual lives in a major metropolitan city, uh, has access to, to wonderful doctors, but yet there are questions and, and things that people just have that uh, our research showed sometimes they don't want to bother their doctor with asking those questions. And you know, I think Amazon has created a, an environment where we want instant access to things. And so we think that we can actually bring that in the oncology space. So can you give us an example of how a family member or a friend would actually use this? Yeah. So. Think about you know a, a patient maybe on Friday uh, afternoon had chemo this morning, and maybe late this evening nine ten o'clock they were experiencing nausea. Um, you know what's that patient to do? Um, maybe they don't live across the street from a major academic cancer center. Um, one of the alternatives is maybe urgent care. Um, maybe their spouse or their partner is saying, you know we should go to the hospital uh, because we don't know. Let's go be safe about that. Wouldn't it be great if you could pick up your iPhone or your Android phone and click a button and within a few seconds have an oncology certified nurse on the phone who not only can help, but also knows your background. They know the cancer you have. They know the stage of cancer. They know the therapeutics that you're already on and be able to triage that conversation. And maybe it's just an anti-nausea medicine that, that would make you feel much better through the next two or three days until you can get in to get a real appointment with your oncologist. The telemedicine platform will allow us to fill that. We could call that script in for a uh, anti-nausea drug. Um, we could look up and make sure that you know there's a 24-hour pharmacy within three miles of your home. Um, that convenience is really what we're trying to go for. You know, and then similarly, if you thought about a, you know, chemotherapy, a lot of times has pretty tough side effects for people. But but even the stress of of cancer care uh, can cause people not to sleep very much. Um, so think about a patient who you know, hasn't slept really well in two or three days. Um, but their primary care provider had called them in months ago, uh, Ambien, uh, to help them sleep at night. But a patient wants to know, can I take Ambien while I'm on this particular chemotherapy drug? 
So where does a consumer go for that information? You go to Google or somewhere like that to look it up. Wouldn't it be great if you could just chat with an oncology pharmacist right now at the comfort of your home and get an answer within five minutes or three minutes or you know 60 seconds that allows you, yes, five milligrams of Ambien tonight would be fine uh, with the chemotherapy you're on. That's examples of what we want to bring to the market and, and what's already in the market uh, right now from us. Sounds so powerful. Why has this never been done before? Yeah, I, I, th I think that when you look at the market over the past five to 10 years, it's people have thought about these things. Uh, people have put um, 800 numbers, nurse lines and things like that together. Um, but if you also look at kind of the, the progression of where we've all come from in the last few years, everybody has smartphones now. If you look at the research from Pew Research, it will tell you that you know, upwards of 85% of people under 65 have a mobile phone, a smartphone now. Even the senior population over 65, about 65, 67% of those people now have smartphones. So you couldn't do what we're talking about 10 years ago, maybe not even five years ago. Um, but we've also learned in the last two years that we have to do things that are more virtual. And so with the experts we have that we've had in our company uh, for the last decade, we think we can bring that expertise to people in the palm of their hands. I know you've done a lot of consumer research and testing on this. Um, what feedback did you get that influenced you and, and uh, how you've built the telehealth service? Yeah, so we, we did. We talked to uh, north of 400 patients with cancer, and that was through qualitative research that we were doing, um, patients that we had known who had been around kind of our, our family and friends and, and so forth. Um, what we heard was that there were several things that they felt were missing in the marketplace. Um, one of those were being able to talk to people who'd been in similar uh, experiences as they had been into. And so we, we thought about, well, could we build a peer mentor network of people who had been in a similar uh, way? The, the comfort and the instant access to information was the other. You know, could we actually get information that was specific and personal to me? And could we get it now? without having to kind of you know, make an appointment and talk to somebody in a month or things like that. But I just wanna know things that's personal to me. Um, and then mental health became a really big thing that we heard in our research. People were really concerned about um, you know, recurrence of cancer. They were worried about how do they talk to their family uh, about the diagnosis that they just had. Um, how do I tell my employer? You know, what does that mean for my job? Uh, is somebody gonna do something uh, because I, I, I can't go to work? Um, so those were kind of the three themes that we, we, we really heard from, from patients. And so that's what we actually started building our, our technology and our service around, uh, utilizing, again, as I said, very detailed human-centered design so that it's a beautiful experience for patients and something that they you know, feel comfortable using, much like they would use technology today from the best apps uh, that they utilize out today. So you have three health plan customers today. Impressive. What's driving their decision to bring this to their customers? Yeah, I think when you look at the market today of, of health plans, um, I, I had a, an opportunity two or three years ago uh, to, to uh, sit at a uh, kind of a meeting at John Doerr's house, John Doerr with Kleiner Perkins. And there were probably 10 to 15 uh, CEOs from various health plans uh, at, at this meeting. And uh, I, I got to be a fly on the wall, if you will, by listening to what everybody was, was talking about. And John asked him a really interesting question about you know, what do you all see in the next five years as major initiatives that you're all concerned about? Um, and, and I thought they would all say membership drive and, you know, uh, actuarial risk and things like this. Um, but it was unanimous across the board that they all said, we want a better relationship with our members. And that's commercial members, that's MA members, that's Medicaid members. And so it was a really telling kind of night that we, we, we got to listen into this. So when I kind of took Iris out to the marketplace and started having conversations with health plans, it rang true again. Um, I kept going to, it's ROI, it's ROI, right? And, and the health plans kept saying, ROI is important, but this is a really big expense for us. It's a really big expense for our employers, but it's also a time that we can do something really great for people. And if we can drive a better member experience for those people, then that's a really you know, compelling argument for us. And, and that's what we're hearing. Um, and so far, things have been really great. Zeke Emanuel is now going to join us in the conversation. Thank you, Annie. Rick, it's a pleasure to be with you. I know that cancer is complicated and patients have a lot of different health care providers. They have their oncologist, their primary care doctor, usually an oncology nurse, an infusion nurse. 
How do you envision Iris interacting in this complicated system of care? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Zeke. It's it's a really good question, and I think pr primarily, you know, what we're what we're creating and what we're bringing to market is a supportive care telemedicine application and service. So we are not trying to replace what the oncologist does. We're not trying to replace the services that they provide. What we're trying to do is to provide supportive care that brings a beautiful member experience and a beautiful patient experience uh, to the end user. And so if we, if we do that in the right way and we are being supportive and not interfering with what the, the primary oncologist wants to do, such as changing chemotherapy, which we're not going to do, um, we think it can create a really nice experience for the patient, but moreover, uh, it, it can be a big help to the provider and to the oncology practice. Yeah, so, you know, I, many years ago, I did a survey of uh, cancer doctors and while they felt very competent about managing pain or managing the side effect of nausea and vomiting, um, they were less confident in their ability to manage mental health issues, depression, anxiety that are common among cancer patients. How is Iris going to deal with the mental health issue? I think this is one of its key elements and kind of unique. Yeah, we, we agree. So when, you know, the research that we did over the last year and a half uh, really focused around, you know, three th primary things. One was symptom management, which you described, but another and a, and a huge one was mental health. How do patients deal with kind of the complexities of cancer? How do they deal with how to tell my family? How do you deal with, you know, can I go to work? Uh, fear of reoccurrence, things of that nature. And when we looked at the research, uh, as you indicate, there's not a ton of uh, expertise that's coming out of uh provider practices today. So we made a decision as, as really an early tenet of what we wanted to do was to bring on oncology social workers, bring on oncology psychologists, and really create that experience for the member, but, but do it in a way that allowed them to, um, number one, not have to pay for any of this because their health plan is sponsoring it, which we think is a really huge opportunity for the patient. Uh, but number two, make it a, an experience where they can find a quality therapist um, that that's someone who's actually employed by Onco Health, a, a name that is trusted, that's been a company in oncology for 10 years. So we're, we're bringing together oncology psychologists, we're bringing together oncology social workers, and we're doing that through a beautiful experience that allows someone to actually go and schedule an appointment right in the application. You can see the time, you can see the experience that the person has, you can see where they came from, um, kind of what their specialty is. And you know we think bringing that to the market right now uh, with everything we've all been going through for the past you know, two years, um, brings a lot of value to patients. Uh, you've been developing IRIS for several years now, and you've just begun to roll it out and have real patients use it. What's the reaction to it? How has it been received? Yeah, so the, the experience has been great. Uh, we launched in New England. Um, that was our first market that we went into. And you know, within an hour of us turning the application and service on, we had uh, patients finding peer mentors. We had patients who were scheduling uh, time with oncology social workers. Uh, we had patients who were consuming content that was very specific to them, content that's not generic, but, you know, hey, I have this particular cancer. I'm on this particular therapy. I'm interested in consuming content and understanding more about the drugs, about the therapy, about the side effects. And, and that's the content that we've, we've developed and the content will continue to develop. And so, you know, so far the experience has been fantastic. Uh, I've talked to the actual people who are using the the product and service, and you know the the comments have been thank you for bringing this to the market. Uh, and and these are patients that, you know, have really great uh, provider oncology uh, doctors today, but this is a supportive care service that seemed to be missing in the marketplace. So. Um, Right now, the experience has been great, and we, we have a, a ton of great things that we're adding to uh, IRIS on a go-forward basis, and we expect it to be much better as we continue. Uh, it's so exciting, Rick. I, I do think IRIS is filling a niche that uh, cancer patients uh, need, and uh, I think it'll be very, very well received. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Zeke. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great to think, Rick, that in five to 10 years, millions of people, millions of cancer patients would have benefited from using this. Yeah, we think within the first year, you know, we're in the thousands. We think within the next year, we're in the tens of thousands. Um, you know, the other thing that we look at, there's there's nothing about this service uh, and this application that is United States uh, specific. Um, not that we're planning on going uh, out of the US now, but um, you know, we know that Western Europe, we know that Singapore, we know Australia, 
Uh, there are markets that have similar health care to the U.S., and, and we think that this has a global reach at some point as well. Um, but we're really excited about it. Yeah, OncoHealth is an incredible future. Yeah, thank It'll you. It'll be fun to watch it. Thanks.